Hey everyone, Wei here. Welcome back to the channel. In my last video, I showed you how to swap portrait backgrounds using ACE Plus Tag. Remember those 99% face similarity results? All those vibrant backgrounds you saw? Yeah, those were pure text-to-image magic. Today we are leveling up. Imagine dropping a person into anything you upload, a sunset beach, a new lit cityscape, whatever, and making it look like they've always been there. That's exactly what this new workflow does. And guess what? ACE Plus is still our secret sauce for keeping faces looking identical to the original. Here's stage 1 results. Notice how the person's lighting and shadows now match the new background? The pose stays the same, and the background doesn't shift much. Just subtle tweaks to make everything cohesive. But wait, what if stage 1 feels off? Maybe the lighting clashes? or the person looks pasted onto the background. No sweat, we've got stage 2. Here's where Redux repainting works its magic. It will rework both the person and the background while keeping the overall style consistent. Here the ACE Plus is used again for face and clothing replacement. The image you are seeing here is the result with the denoising strength of 1, which significantly altered the composition. If the denoising strength is set lower, the composition can remain relatively unchanged. Let's check out some real examples first. Here's our original portrait, and here's a beach scene we are dropping her into. Watch this. With our workflow, we can make her stand knee-deep in actual waves. The magic happens in specific edit zones where we control exactly how she interacts with the environment. See how her feet disappear into the water here? If that looks a bit off to you, no worries. That's where Redux repainting comes to the rescue. And check this out. Her t-shirt text stays perfectly readable through the whole process. Mind blown, right? If you're hyped to try this, let's jump into the setup. Now I know what you are thinking. 12 node groups look intimidating. But here's the cool part. By group 5, she's already cheating in the new scene. The next groups are just bonus levels. Group 6 brings in Redux for those sweet texture tweaks. And by group 9, we got face swap magic that keeps her identity locked in. Hands up if you've ever had clothing glitches after editing. That's what the following groups fix. Pro tip, only use this if the outfit changes bother you. This workflow's all about flexible effort. Ready for the step by step? Let's kick off the actual workflow. First thing first, we are working clean here. Disable all node groups except one two. This keeps our workspace focused. Upload the portrait and background. Let's run the workflow. This stage does the heavy lifting of positioning your subject. Most of the nodes within this group are quite common in my other workflows, so I won't go into detail about each one. See this Pro Post Depth Map Blur node? That's our secret sauce for creating natural background blur based on this depth map. Now the fun part, precision editing. In the preview bridge node, we use the magic eraser tool on her forearm area. Watch closely as we delete that section. Okay, let's save the changes and run the workflow. Now the background flowers peek through instantly. Is the edge transition perfect? Not yet, but that's why we have group 5 coming up later. Switch to group 2, our power station. The T-Cache node here acts like a turbocharger for rendering speeds. Check out how Florence 2 run auto-generate smart prompts. Total time saver. Now the ACE Plus magic. We've got two specialized LoRa's loaded. The top one handles face swaps while the bottom tackles outfit changes. Through my testing, I found that this lower LoRa performs better for outfit changes compared to the upper one, which is why this workflow incorporates both. Ready to level up? Let's fire up group 3. 
Alright folks, let's dive into this next phrase together. First thing first, let's run the workflow to kick off the IC light magic. Watch how the backlight suddenly wraps around our subject like she's standing in front of a sunset window. Cool effect, right? But oh ho, check how her details got a bit fuzzy and the colors went dull. Totally normal at this stage, promise. Now we are switching gears to the clean up crew. This knows working lightning fast on your computer's brain, that's your CPU doing the heavy lifting. Here's the game plan. We are boosting the contrast first to save those sweet lighting details from getting lost. Then we are bringing back the original background because consistency is key, am I right? Time for the secret sauce, the image detail transfer node. Keep that blur sigma setting low to start unless things looks like a bad photoshop job. Then we've got the color comeback kit node. Ok not gonna lie, we are still seeing some issues. The here highlights, a bit flight. That previously erased arm sections still have issues. But hey, that's why there's a next step. Alright folks, let's work through this image enhancement process together. Imagine we are sitting side by side at the editing station. First things first, we are going to tackle those tricky areas that need fixing using the digital equivalent of the magic marker. Here's how it plays out. We hit the fast bypasser button to temporarily disable the case sampler. Then pop open the mask editor. Since we are starting fresh, it's like having a blank canvas. Let me run the workflow first. Ok, now open the mask editor. After saving our digital sketch, we flip the case sampler back on and let the workflow run again. We can now see the backlight wraps around her hair like natural sunlight. And that arm looks like it's part of the floral arrangement. This node group can also be utilized to generate shadows in the background. For instance, by marking the floor areas near the feet, the system generates realistic shadows that anchor our subject to her environment. Ok, let's move on to the next group. In this group, we are using Redux to repaint the previous image. This helps make the lighting look more natural or adjust the woman's pose. For Redux's reference image, you've got two options, either the image from the first group or the one from the previous group. Most of the time, we pick the second one. Quick note, when you run this, pick the second option. Its lighting effects are way more useful for reference. I messed this up earlier, so learn from my mistake. Now when passing an image to the case sampler's latent space, there are also two choices. If you pick a blank image, set the denoising strength in the sampler to 1. If you use the previous group's image, adjust the denoising strength based on what you need. Let's try the first option and run the workflow. Check it out. The background and the woman's pose totally transform. Next, switch to the second option. Set the denoising strength to 0.5 and rerun the workflow. This time the pose and the composition stay pretty consistent, but the face still shifts, no worries. That's where face swapping comes in. First, let's run the workflow again. This node group focuses specifically on repainting the face. After the last round of repainting, faces can lose some sharpness. 
especially they are small in the image. To fix this, I've connected Redux to reference the original image's face. That way, the repainted face stays closer to the source. Alright, let's activate the next node group and keep things rolling. Let's run this workflow. Watch how this node stitched the face from our original image with the face generated in the previous step together. The whole point here is maintaining consistency across iterations. Check out this preview image node. It shows exactly where we'll repaint. Pro tip, tweak the mask grew node's parameter to expand the repainting area slightly beyond just the face. Alright, let's activate the next group to continue repainting and refining the face swap. Running the workflow again now. We are using a few model paired with the ACE portrait Laura here. Most times, a denoising strength of 0.8 works perfectly, but if result feels off, bump it up to 1. Heads up though, at 4th strength, the facial lighting might sync too closely with the original image, which could clash with your scene's ambient light. Not happy with the similarity? Click that menu random seed button. Sometimes luck saves the day. Once you've got a better face swap, crop it neatly and use this final node to paste it back onto the original image. Let's compare side by side. See how the clothing still looks noticeably different from the original? If that bothers you, no sweat. Just keep following the workflow steps to minimize those discrepancies. In this group, we are using segment anything to create a princess clothing mask. First step, describe her outfit right here in the note. Details matter. Once that's set, run the workflow. Watch how it stitches the clothing pieces together using a different node this time. Now let's jump to the next group to repaint the clothing and match the original image's style. Running the workflow now. Done. Let's compare side by side. See how close we are getting? Using the similar method as before, we will crop the repainted clothing and paste it back onto the original. I will drop in the comparison node again. Check out how close the clothing matches the original now. The final note group is designed for hand repairs, which I won't delve into in detail. Her hands are out of frame, so we are skipping this group. And just like that, workflow complete. I'll keep building more workflows around ACE+. Hit that subscribe if you want to see what's next. Thanks for hanging with me today. Catch you in the next tutorial.